When you focus on the breath, you're focusing on the force of life. If there's no breath coming in, no breath going out, the body wouldn't be able to stay. As for your mind, it would be disembodied. For the body and the mind to work together requires that the breath work together as well. And it only stands to reason that if the breath is good, then it will be good for the health of the body, the health of the mind. So pay some attention to how you breathe. There are lots of different ways you can conceive of the breath, energy, and the body. One that Ajahn Fuang recommended one time was that you think of a column of light starting at the top of the head, going down to the tailbone. And as you breathe in, breath comes in from all directions into the column. and you breathe out, it goes out in all directions. Or you can think of the body as a sponge. When the breath comes in, it comes in through all the holes in the sponge. It goes out through all the holes. Or you can think of it coming in and out at a particular spot. Or as you breathe in, you can think of the breath energy starting in the body and then radiating out. There are lots of different ways that you can have an image of the breath that you hold in mind. You can try some of these, or you can come up with some of your own. See what perception helps. Make the breath a good place to stay. That's part of the instructions the Buddha left behind. You try to breathe in and out, sensitive to rapture, sensitive to pleasure. When you get a sense of rapture or pleasure, you try to let that, that spread throughout the body. He doesn't say how. And John Lee gives some good recommendations for thinking of the breath energy as being the solvent that allows these comfortable feelings to spread throughout the tissues of the body. There are lots of ways you can think of the breath. The Buddha leaves it up to you. But the basic principle is that if the breath feels good to the body and feels good for the mind, it's going to be a lot easier for the mind and the body to stay together. And if you're to be alert, mindful, and aware right here in the present moment. Because this is where you're going to see all the important things in life. How your mind shapes things, shapes its experiences. Experiences don't come ready-made from outside. You have to shape them to make sense out of them. And it's up to you to learn how to do this skillfully. As with any skill, the teacher can give you some general recommendations. But it's up to you to use your own powers of observation and your desire to do this well. Seeing the importance of getting the mind to settle down, to be trained, to do what you want it to do. That's how your skill is going to develop. <laughs>